I cannot even begin to explain to you guys how disappointed I am at the fact that the most viewed video ever on my channel is me frazzled, riled up at the end of a long day ranting about four white millionaires. I gained over 200 subscribers from that video alone, so for all of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome, I'm Prachi. I have a tumultuous and problematic relationship with shopping for makeup and skincare, and I'm currently on a beauty low buy in which I'm allowing myself to buy 20 fun things during the year 2020 across all of the following categories makeup, skincare, hair care, nail polish, perfumes, accessories like jewelry, etc. Every month, mmm. That's kind of a lie. I try every month to post a monthly check-in where I just talk about how my month went, what my relationship to shopping was like in the previous month, what I chose to buy, if I chose to buy anything, etc. And I'm going to link up in the cards a playlist of all of my previous monthly check-ins since I started my channel a little bit over a year ago. They're probably the best indicator of like my personality, my relationship to shopping, just my general like journey on YouTube with makeup. Now, depression has kind of been kicking my ass a little bit for the last couple of weeks and because I've also started my summer courses and I've been called back to work, the little energy that I have during the day I've pretty much had to preserve to do either work or schoolwork. So I apologize for my absence for the last couple of weeks and for the hella delay in getting this video up. Oh my god, this is like the longest intro ever, so I'm going to wrap it up so we can actually get into my very belated May slash June check-in. Let's get it! If we look at how 2020 has progressed, May was the month where the bottom fell out for me. And not just socially and politically, as we've all been aware, but on a very personal level. Because May was actually the month where I lost a family member. And the grief that I experienced at losing a family member, it had me fall off the wagon for a bit. Now this actually didn't happen until like 10, 11 days into May. So let me actually rewind a little bit and talk about the start of May 2020. Feels like a lifetime ago. Prior to May, in the first four months of 2020, I had only bought four beauty items total. Spoiler alert for later on in the video, but in the month of May alone, I bought seven beauty items meaning that I have now used up 11 out of my 20 available spots for fun things that I can buy myself in 2020. So let's break down what actually happened. At the start of May, before life went off the rails, I made two very careful, well thought out, planned purchases. So the first was this Essie nail polish in the color Playdate. I'm wearing it on my fingers right now. I was also wearing it in my previous two videos. A color in this sort of mid-tone pinky purple family has been on my wish list for a really really long time because the only other nail polish I have that was even vaguely purple is this incredibly light lavender color called Go Ginza. And I wanted something with a little bit more saturation, something that's a little bit more purple with like a decent pinkish magenta tone running under it. I've been carefully mulling over potential options for a while. This had been a candidate that was sitting on my wish list for months. And because it was May, it was spring, I felt like this is the appropriate season in which to be wearing this color. I pulled the trigger at the start of May and I bought this. So that was intentional, well-planned purchase number one. Intentional, well-planned purchase number two was this beautiful little gem. The MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in La Leyenda from the MAC Selena collaboration collection that came out earlier this year. From the moment that this collection was announced and revealed, I immediately had my eyes on this highlighter. Because one, I love Selena. Two, gold. Three, this iconic bedazzled bustier inspired packaging. Four, this incredibly pretty embossed rose, which has slowly begun wearing off as I'm actually using the highlighter. And five, because the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish highlighters are amongst my favorite formulas. It's great. I'm wearing it on my cheeks right now. I don't really know if it's visible on camera because I don't like applying highlighter with a very, very heavy hand. But in person, it looks beautiful. It doesn't emphasize any of the 
insane texture and acne and shit I am going on in my skin. I love this. It's a great purchase. I thought it through really well. No regrets. So we're about two weeks into May, I'm like two purchases in, and internally I was like, yeah, I'm done. I won't buy anything else for the rest of the month. Well, a few days later, my life went full-blown Chinua, Achebe, Yates, things fall apart, the center cannot hold, and suddenly I found myself grieving and very, very depressed. For the newbies to my channel, when I say something like I'm depressed or I have anxiety or I have ADHD, I'm not saying it in the jokey way that somebody who just likes things neat says I have OCD. I'm saying it in the I go see a therapist and a psychiatrist and I have been clinically diagnosed with this stuff and I'm on meds for it sort of way. I've struggled with clinical depression for a long time. It sort of comes and it goes and I've learned how to sort of manage it over the years to make sure that it doesn't really spiral out. But this time, because it was also accompanied by grief, there was no really controlling it. And those of y'all who've been watching me for a while, you know that I have talked at length about how I tend to shop for makeup and skincare when I'm feeling really stressed or really sad because I perceived shopping for beauty items as a form of self-care, as a coping mechanism, as a tool with which to self-soothe. I have a long history of using shopping to cope with depression and the stress that comes with being a university student and quite frankly, which is being a human being in the year 2020. Now, to be clear, I am not claiming in any way, shape, or form that going shopping ever fixed my depression or actually genuinely alleviated it or completely relieved me of stress or anything of the sort. What I mean is that when I felt shitty, shopping felt like a way to temporarily make me feel 5 to 10% better. And 5 to 10% doesn't seem like a lot. You're like, God, is that even worth it? But when I'm feeling really depressed or really just bad and stressed out, even just a temporary 5 to 10% improvement in mood can be the difference between lying in bed all day crying and mustering up the energy to get up, brush your teeth, and eat something. I hate admitting that. It always seems so like crazy and shallow and ridiculous when I admit it, but like it's the harsh truth about my life. And in 2019, I went on this full year-long replacement-only no-buy. And during my no-buy year, because I wasn't allowing myself to shop, I taught myself a whole bunch of additional coping mechanisms and methods for stress, grief, anxiety, whatever. And my original tried and true method for dealing with stress, buying makeup and skincare, lay dormant. This past May, however, I got to a point where the the grief I was feeling and the stress because it wasn't just that I had lost a family member I had also registered to write the LSAT and I was also going through my own sort of like physical health issues which were not getting resolved because understandably they were a back burner given the global pandemic so I had like all of these layers of stress and it piled on to a point that I felt like I needed to give Old Faithful a try. I was that desperate for some sort of relief. Shopping for makeup and skincare to feel better was this like familiar, old, well-worn path that was so easy to slip back down. And so I just kind of went, fuck it. I'm on a low buy this year. I have some leeway to buy stuff and I just need something, like anything, to make me feel even just a little bit better for a short amount of time. Let's do it, let me buy some stuff. And although I sound very like intense and energized right now giving that speech to you, I need you to understand that I went through this thought process while lying down in a bed that I had not left for over 40 hours. Because that is just how shit I was feeling. That was the extent to which I was non-functional. So, still lying down on my bed, I placed an order at Sephora for the Fenty Glossy Posse that had come out during the holiday season. Because y'all know that I've been eyeing that darker gloss bomb, hot chocolate, for a while. I've really wanted to try the bright pink and bright orange gloss bombs in that set as well, and they're only available in that set. Glosses in those tones are my absolute jam for the summer, and so I was like, boom, okay, let's get it. I then placed, at the same time, an order for a Korean skincare product that I've been wanting to try for a really, really long time. 
the I'm from Mugwort essence. Mugwort, or Artemisia, a much prettier sounding name, has been blowing up in K-beauty for like the past year now. Everyone talks about how it's like great for redness relief, for soothing and calming down like inflamed pimples and acne. It's been hyped up by like all of the K-beauty influencers and review people that I watch, and it had been lounging on my wish list as this sort of like dream skincare item for almost an entire year now. And I picked those two items in particular off of my wish list because they were things that I really wanted and was very, very excited to try before all of this happened at the very least. And so my logic was, if I let myself order the things I'm being hyped about for a really long time, it will ideally give me as big of a mood boost as possible. So I placed the gloss order and the essence order one right after another, and then I waited. I was like, come on dopamine, come on serotonin, come at me, hit me with that like 5% mood boost, let's go! And nothing, absolutely nothing. No excitement, no little dopamine hit, no release of tension or slight little rush of joy. I felt exactly the same, same level of stressed, same level of sad. And so I just went back to sleep. Now, I'm a sciencey bitch. It's a leftover from my engineering student days. I'm all about hypotheses and experiments. This particular phase of my feel 5% better experiment had failed. So when I woke up again after a 10 hour depression nap, I was like, hmm, maybe the problem is that it was online shopping. I don't have the items that I bought immediately physically like in my hand and maybe the physicality of it is important for me to like feel good. So perhaps if I actually go out and buy some makeup right now, I'll feel good. I also happen to be out of groceries, like there was nothing I could eat in this house. So I went to a shopper's drug mart near me that had both canned soup for sale and a beauty boutique. And there I made one decent beauty purchase and three supremely dumb beauty purchases. Just like the most impulsive, poorly thought out shopping decisions I've made in a hot minute. Now the decent purchase is called the decent purchase because it was actually an item that was already on my makeup wish list and it wasn't exorbitantly priced. It's this light periwinkle blue nail polish by Essie called Bikini Sotini. I was planning to buy this nail polish in June anyway because I own nothing like it. These were the only two other blue nail polishes I owned and I wanted something around this color, this sort of like sky blue periwinkle, as a bright pop of color for the summer. So this was just me sort of like moving up the purchase of this ahead of schedule. A decent decision considering the circumstances. The two absolutely asinine impulse purchases I made were this Clarins lip oil in the shade Red Berry and, get ready for this one, the Urban Decay Naked Honey Palette. Y'all, I really don't know how to express to you how dumb both of these purchases were. First of all, I had literally just, the day before, bought five mini Fenty lip glosses. Why did I then get a sixth gloss? And when it comes to this, if you asked me to look at the Urban Decay Naked Palette Collection and pick out the palette that I think is the most suited for me, the one that is the most attractive to me, the one that catches my eye, the one that I'm the most intrigued by, it's not even this. It's the Urban Decay Naked Heat. Given all of the Urban Decay Naked palettes in front of me in that store, I was so fucking out of it, I did not even buy the palette that would have been the most appealing to me. The one that I have for years told my friends is the one that is the most appealing to me. I instead bought this. As a side note, I forced myself to reach for and wear this palette all throughout June. I'm also wearing it on my eyes today for a really like basic, simple, easy, neutral look, and I actually really like it. But that is besides the damn point. It is sheer dumb luck that I ended up liking this palette. I bought this without ever having even considered this before because it seemed pretty at the time and my brain was just kind of like, pretty is good. Pretty is a way to get that sweet, sweet dopamine. 
get it. And then I went home with my three new beautiful items, expecting that sort of high, for lack of a better word, to kick in. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That slightly giddy, oh my god, I just went shopping and I bought a bunch of really pretty stuff. That's hopefully gonna elevate me out of this misery a little bit, if you know what I'm saying. And that feeling never came. Not even when I unpacked the makeup out of all of the bags and boxes to look at it. Not even when my Sephora package of Fenty glosses came a week or so later. Not even when this essence finally made its way to me all the way from Korea. And it was at this point that I suddenly realized that my new by year had changed me somehow. And it had changed me in a particular way which at that precise moment when I was feeling so stressed and so sad and so desirous of some form of relief, I did not want to be changed. I actually felt irrationally, suddenly, very, very angry at the fact that I had ever chosen to go on a no by year because I felt like it had robbed me of a way in which to soothe myself. And I needed soothing at that particular point in time. I was trying so hard to achieve it and this method that had worked for me for years, it was no longer working. I did not feel any better. I actually felt worse because now I was upset and angry on top of being really sad and depressed. And it took a couple weeks to look back at what I was going through in May and realize that what I was feeling was actually a compounded sense of loss. I was not only grieving the death of a family member, but I was also on some level grieving the loss of a coping mechanism that I had used for years to feel better. I was grieving the loss of what had essentially been a way of life for me at one point in time. It's like if you had a blanket or like a stuffed animal as a child and when you were a child you truly believed for some amount of time that if you slept wrapped up in this blanket or holding this particular stuffed animal you were safe from any of the potential monsters like hiding under your bed or in your closet. And then as you grow older, there slowly comes a day when you realize that the blanket is just a blanket. It cannot protect you from the bad things in the world. And so that object loses its particular magic and there is no going back ever to a world in which a blanket is an actual shield again. Because that earnest, 100% sincere, belief that you had as a child that yes this blanket was somehow magical and would protect you and was a shield like that's gone forever that's kind of what happened to me Sh shopping for makeup had a very particular magic for me it functioned in a very particular way in my life and i had suddenly lost that magic and i grieved that loss on some level alongside my much larger one i almost sort of went through phases. There was denial and bargaining when my first attempt with online shopping didn't work. There was anger at it being gone, at it no longer working. And then there was the return of depression. I felt so much worse for the entire next week after my failed experiment because not only had I tried to feel better and failed, I also learned that a method I relied on was just no longer effective. And looking back now, I have to be honest and say that I think there was also a lot of fear coming into play because, you know, I had lost a coping mechanism and so then I had this irrational fear that that meant I was somehow now unable to cope or at the very least less able to cope, less able to handle stress and grief and sadness and the pressures of the world. By the end of like May, however, I hit acceptance and then not just acceptance, I moved a step beyond because you know like while i had been so wrapped up in being upset about having lost this particular coping mechanism i had forgotten the very crucial fact that shopping for makeup had never been a good coping mechanism in the first place it had in fact been a terrible and toxic habit that usually left me feeling just like guilt-ridden because I had then bought all of this stuff and spent all of this money, then also really stressed out at the clutter created by all of the additional stuff I had bought, and it never actually got me any closer to the actual underlying problem or issue ever being solved. I eventually figured out other ways to cope with my grief and stress during May. 
I binge watched the worst K-drama of all time on Netflix. I ugly cried for five minutes at an animated movie about a chopped off hand. <laughs> I called up friends and family members. I had an entire Miyazaki movie marathon over Zoom with my friends. I sang Disney princess songs really off key in this very same bathroom at the top of my lungs into my hairbrush. And I failed miserably but had a lot of fun trying to learn a very, very hard BTS choreography. All of those individual little things helped me feel 5 to 10 to 15 percent better just a little by little, until I actually felt okay. And once I started feeling okay around the last week of May, I then realized that the fact that shopping no longer seems to work as a stress relieving mechanism for me, that's actually a good thing. And me realizing that it's no longer effective, that it no longer works, that's actually a great thing because it removes one of the biggest motivators driving my former really bad shopping habits. I know from hard learned experience throughout May that it is not going to work to make me feel even a little bit better. And so I'm just not that tempted to try it anymore. And the effects of this really kicked into full force that last week of May and and all throughout June because the amount of stress that I, and let's be real, like all of us, felt during the weeks following George Floyd's death, that shit was astronomical, like through the roof. I had friends on the front lines of protests, I had family members living in Minneapolis like a stone's throw away from burning buildings, and every day was just a fresh horror of new images of just insane police brutality. The urge to escape reality, to feel better, to relieve stress, to feel just like a little bit less sad or upset. It was at an all-time high. It was so intense. And yet, I bought absolutely no makeup or skincare or anything of that sort all throughout June. I felt a couple of times almost like muscle memory or some sort of like a phantom limb this twitch, this urge to go buy something pretty to make myself feel better. But every single time, it was almost immediately met with, Proch, remember when you tried that and it like didn't work for you at all? This trick is not functional for you anymore, try something else. I, and so I did. I donated, signed petitions, I watched a lot of like videos of people talking about the issue. I recommitted to writing the LSAT and started studying even harder because I was like, the justice system in both the US and Canada is on some level just so fucked. I, I was reminded suddenly like why I wanted to be a lawyer in the first place, that these were the sorts of issues that I cared about, and the time that I wasn't spending studying for the LSAT, I started filling that time with reading, long form material again, like books on white fragility and police abolition and the history of anti-blackness in North America. And when my brain kind of like maxed out, when I was just like so exhausted from studying for the LSAT and reading that I just like needed to turn my brain off so to speak, I threw myself into learning new recipes, I cleaned my entire house, and again failed miserably while having a lot of fun trying to learn an old Missy Elliott choreography. I did not spend a damn cent on beauty in June, and yet I neither cracked under the pressure nor spiraled out. May was a lot. I returned momentarily to my pre no buy year ways. You guys have never actually known what I was like then because I didn't start my channel until I started my no buy year. You only know the Prachi who has tried to get her shopping under control. What happened in May? Buying five items over the span of two days because I felt really bad? That was peak 2018 Prachi. That was the extent to which I had a shopping problem in 2018. That was the reason why I felt so severely like I needed to go on a no buy year. And I'm glad on some level you guys actually got a glimpse of that because then it makes the transformation that happened to me over my no buy year and the way in which I shop right now so much more stark. It helps you as viewers and me as the person actually going through it realize that I really have changed. And here I kind of want to pause and make sure I make something very, very clear. My favorite 
check-in that I've ever filmed. My favorite video that I've ever filmed actually is the March check-in for my Nova hair. I'm going to link that up in the cards because I was filming that as I was coming out of a really dark place and sort of my thesis, one of the points that I made in that video, one of the lessons that I learned is that progress is not linear. When you conquer a particular bad habit or quit a particular bad habit, that is not a one-time thing. You do not just like slay the dragon and then live happily ever after for the rest of your life. The dragon keeps fucking coming back. And anybody who has ever tried sobriety, meaning that they have ever tried to quit some form of either addictive behavior or like an addictive substance, there is a recognition amongst all of us that the epiphanies, the breakthroughs, the voila, aha, I got it moment, those only last for a short amount of time. The old temptations will rear their ugly heads again, and you will have to have the strength and energy and grace to fight those demons back another day. The guiding principle of the way in which I manage my ADHD, the way in which I manage my relationship to shopping, the way in which I manage anything that is troublesome and problematic in life is by following the adage, no success is final, no failure is fatal. Right now, I exist in a space in which shopping for beauty items does not relieve stress. Shopping in general does not relieve stress, but I have to be vigilant and cognizant of the fact that I will not necessarily exist in this space forever. And that there may one day come a time where I am once again in the space of buying things does make me feel good, it does relieve tension, it does relieve stress. I have to use my time in this space effectively and wisely. I have wanted for years to have a normal relationship to shopping for makeup. And what I mean when I say that is I want to approach shopping for makeup kind of the way in which I approach grocery shopping or shopping for clothes. I buy replacements for things that run out and from time to time I decide to try a new recipe or get a very specific type of clothing like let's say a flowy yellow top. When I do that, I always research. In the context of groceries, I'll look up and read the recipes and the prep work. In the context of clothing, I will do some research into the types of stores and brands that might have flowy yellow tops of a style I like in my budget. Then, in both cases, I make a list and I go by just specific things that I'm looking for. This is normal shopping behavior. And for years, I wasn't able to achieve it with beauty because beauty, like makeup and skincare played this like weird outsized role in my life. Using beauty items wasn't just a way for me to experience a fun and creative hobby. Acquiring beauty items, buying beauty items was a form of stress relief for me. So beauty items, pieces of makeup, skincare, hair care, nail care, whatever, they played this dual role for me. And right now in July leading into August, because of the experience that I had in May, one of those roles is defunct. I need to use this time moving forward to foster a normal relationship with beauty shopping. That's my job going forward for the rest of the year. That's the thing that I'm going to be working on for however long this feeling lasts. This feeling where buying makeup has no power over me as a coping mechanism, as a form of stress relief. It is instead simply just the act of buying makeup. So where I've left you now at this check-in, I still have nine spots left on my Project 2020 list. Nine items that I can buy over the last five months of 2020. I'm genuinely very excited to see what those items will be now that I'm in a space where I'm no longer buying out of a desire for stress relief, but instead out of a genuine desire to build a beautiful and highly functional makeup collection. Anyway, this video has been hella long. I have to leave for work in like five minutes. Uh, my makeup is like melted off my face. July was a very like interesting and kind of different month. A thing very much so related to the acquisition of makeup and beauty items happened that was like pretty major that I want to get you guys' feedback on, separate from me explaining the entire <laughs> messy emotional aspects of this entire video. So I'm just gonna film a short little separate July check-in, probably tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and it'll be uploaded sometime this week as well. So I've taken your time for long enough. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, I hope you have a great upcoming week. And even if the rest of your weekends up becoming messy or imperfect, I hope that
they are still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Thanks for watching. Bye.